Don't just live for tomorrow Or just live for yesterday Just be glad for all you have that's in today And though you've come through many obstacles Hey everyone, Connie here, and welcome to my blind reaction, or uh, first impressions reaction, to episode one of Agent Carter. So, this is the spin-off series of Captain America, starring Peggy Carter, um, and that's pretty much all I know about it. It takes place after the events of Captain America, the first Avenger, and it's just all about Peggy. Um, I don't know what to expect from the tone of it. I don't know if it's going to have like the feel of like the more modern um, MCU Disney Plus shows or not. I don't know what it's going to be like at all. So I'm willing to give it a shot though because I do like Peggy as a character both from the movie and especially from the um, What If series, although it's technically an alternate version and everything, um, Captain Carter, but still, I'm definitely interested to see what this is like for a lot of reasons. Um, this is also, I think, the first MCU series I'm actually checking, or checking out on the channel. I guess you could count it as MCU series. Um, even though it's not like, again, one of the Disney Plus ones. Like, I, I've done like first impression reviews of stuff like Loki and Falcon and Winter Soldier and all, but I don't think I ever did a reaction to any of them. In fact, I think I said that the only one I would actually do a reaction series to was probably going to be like the upcoming Miss Marvel series, which I still say, I'm, which I still stand by, I'm going to do. But I'm going to give this one a shot. I'm going to check out this ser this uh, older series at this point and see see if I enjoy it. And maybe we can get to it more. Because as it being a first impressions reaction, it's basically for me to, term to determine whether or not I want to continue this as a reaction series. Um, if I end up liking it enough, we possibly will. We'll continue it as a full series and come back to it in the future. Um, otherwise, maybe I'll just only like it enough to watch it on my own time. Or maybe I just won't like it at all. It's possible. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I'm not 100% sure what to expect from this. But I do like the MCU, for the most part. <laughs> so hopefully I like this. Um, it's not like it's a Guardians of the Galaxy or Thor Ragnarok related thing, so it's like, it, it's likely I'm not going to hate it. <laughs> but we'll see. And yes, I know that probably, that possibly got me some dislikes there, just for hating on Thor Ragnarok and Guardians of the Galaxy. I mean, I'll sp I will speak my truth, though. But either way, <laughs> um, we're going to check this out and hopefully really end up enjoying it. I also don't know how many episodes this is, and based off of this first one, um, they are double-length episodes, like about 40 minutes each. So it's like... I, I don't know exactly how long this series is, so we'll just kind of... We're going to play it by ear. Um, but we'll see. We'll see. Um, for the time being, let's just get this going. <laughs> let's just check it out and see what it has in store. So when the screen fades to black, pause this redirect and go to the description below. Follow the link to the reaction, and after you watch it, come back here to the redirect and resume play. Because after it fades black and then fades back in... Everything from that point forward will be my afterthoughts and will contain spoilers to the episode. So, that being said, thank you so much for tuning in, and I will see you at the reaction. 
and we are back and we'll begin with spoilers in three two one now so there are certain characters in the mcu that seem to be either mixed or even in some cases get some negative reception due to in some of these critics and people's eyes being too pushy on an agenda or whatnot and yet whenever i've heard people talk about this series it's always positive and yet this series like this series predates stuff like captain marvel and whatnot but when you really think about it it's this it's the same kind of deal obviously not story-wise or anything necessarily but in in terms of it being a series starring and focused on a a badass strong-willed and determined female character with a very feminist ideology to it like this is what this is a big thing that people complained about Captain Marvel for that it was trying to push that too hard and yet this series is doing the same thing and like arguably just as much if not more just based on this first episode like it's super obvious this is going to be a recurring thing throughout this series and it just, it, it astounds me that this is something that, despite this series being so praised and everything, this is something that people have complained about with the different movies and stuff doing the same thing. And it's like, that's just weird to me. But, so yeah, this, this takes place directly after, well, not directly necessarily, but basically right after the events of the first Avenger. Um, Steve's plane went down. He got frozen in ice, yada, yada. We know the drill. And Peggy is just kind of dealing with it while continuing to do the best she can, but not really being given a lot of jobs or things to do because, you know, the time period and lots of sexism. But after Howard Stark is accused of being a traitor due to basically going missing during a trial, well, during the course of a trial, she ends up finding and working with him in order to not only clear his name, but stop potentially, like, devastative threats like really badly devastative as we see in the episode it's a simple premise a simple idea for this um it's very much in line with um with the mcu the presentation is a little slow in this episode i admit there's some parts of this where i'm just kind of like waiting for it to get to the good stuff but it eventually does hit its stride. And when it does, it really hits its stride. Like, we, like, for example, some, some very huge positives in this episode and some things that really, like, felt impactful to the episode and, and will probably kind of carry over with the rest of the series. This, the, the girl, the roommate, Peggy's roommate, was exceptionally likable she was so likable so nice and sweet and clearly wanted peggy to just be able to enjoy life again <laughs> and she gets killed we don't even see her on screen a lot only a couple small scenes and then the bad guys kill her and 
after you see Peggy beat their asses and everything, and just be a total badass, she breaks down. And it the scene felt so real. Like, in the heat of the moment, seeing what happened to her friend, she, of course, went after those people who did it, who were still there. But, after the fact, when she was alone again, when, when it, they were gone, she let that facade drop. And it shows that even though Peggy is strong and powerful and smart and capable, she's still a person. She still has emotions. She still feels. And so soon after losing Steve, having this girl who she'd only known for a few months, but had grown very close to, ha having her die as well is just, it destroyed her. It absolutely emotionally destroyed her in that moment. And again, seeing her break down worked really well. And of course, you know, amazing actress who helps sell it really well. Um, another huge positive to this episode, Jarvis. He's hilarious. He has so much personality and character to him. He's legitimately funny, he's clever, he's interesting, but it's also clear that there's something more going on, especially by the end. Um, but he, even just the way he's, like, constantly, like, talking about ha having to, like, do things for his wife and everything, he's, like, he's super sweet, but at the same time, he's a total goober. Like, the dude is ridiculous, but in a really fun way. He He's smarmy, he's sarcastic, he's... he's fun. And again, the actor definitely helps sell it. Um, and, and there's certain bits of stuff in here that's like just really satisfying too. That moment near the end, pretty at pretty much the end of the episode, where Peggy deals with that sexist pig, who was uh, who who's legitimately sexually assaulted that waitress, um, who is a friend and everything. It's like that like certain things make my blood boil and sexual assaults especially based in, in sexism really makes my blood boil and it's like obviously you've seen the entire thing like done in various movies and shows and everything where like the guy slaps the waitress on the ass and everything and it's like that that's been done in other things and it's like every time i see it it's just, it's one of those things that very specifically enrages me like almost nothing else can. Sexual assault in general enrages me, as it should, as it should anyone, um, especially as someone who's experienced it. But when it's done in that kind of manner, and clearly in a way that looks down on women and sees them as basically meat. It's just, and especially, specifically the act of slapping a girl's ass like that. It's just, it makes me, it makes me want to do what Peggy did and seeing Peggy do that was super satisfying. She put the fear of God in that guy, and, like, <laughs> that was so fucking satisfying. And it's just, like, honestly, like, I would want to do worse than what she did. Like, that kind of thing enrages me so much, it's like, I, I would not mind slitting his throat. <laughs> As harsh and as as terrible as that sounds, it's like that's it's that's how much that kind of thing pisses me off. 
That's how horrific I see an action like that. Sexual assault, in my eyes, is one of the worst things you could do to someone. Without question to me. And again, as someone who's experienced it. As someone who's had friends who have experienced it. And as someone who just understands how much it can affect a person's mental, emotional, and even physical health. Even long after the event takes place. It's... Mm, it just seeing him get his comeuppance was so satisfying and i like how she's like tip big and it's like one fuck yes you always tip well you should always tip well because for some stupid reason these restaurants and diners and whatnot can get away with paying their waitresses and waiters and whatnot their wait staff super low just because it's a tip based job which is fucking stupid in the first place no other country does this it's it's extremely hor horrible that they do this that they force them to get by on tips because they just refuse to pay them a, a normal wage even but especially not a living wage and it's like so and Unless, like, your wait staff is, like, actively antagonistic towards you in a really bad way, you, you tip them well. It's just the right thing to do. But I like how, like, after putting the fear of God in him, it's like he just, like, pulling out all of these bills just to give her as a tip. He's just so scared. He's, he, he's going to tip really fucking well. <laughs> he's going to pull out every bill he has in that wallet. <laughs> Um, but yeah, we got some conspiracies and everything going on, and also we have an explosion that seems to pull itself in on itself, if that makes sense. This was another one of the big highlight moments of the episode, obviously, when, when that bomb went off. Because at first, it's just a huge explosion, like massive. And then it, it creates this vacuum, which would happen. Like a huge explosion would have a sort of vacuum effect to it as well. But it gets more so. And it actually collapses in on itself to where even later on in the episode, they mention they can't find the building. Like it's not just that it, it exploded and that it's just in total disarray and everything's like completely destroyed no they can't find the building it, it's it's kind of like it exploded outward and then just sucked everything back into itself kind of like just popping out of existence or whatnot and it's just like what the fuck are these bombs and, and in a way that makes the bathroom scene where peggy's disarming the one that much scarier and, and that much more anxiety inducing <laughs> seeing what those bombs do is freaky and seeing that there is that truck filled with them is freaky it's like you really gave us some stakes in this first episode it's like you really did well at giving us a, a real threat here <laughs> it's genuinely horrific and i i love it it's it, it, it in the best way possible i mean um so i i'm really really excited to see where this goes and so the question is will i see where it goes on my own time or do I think I want to react to this? Oh, continue reacting to it. Yeah, it's definitely the latter. I, I think 
I think it's pretty obvious based on my glowing review <laughs> of this first episode that I loved this. Again, the only issue I would point out is that it was a little slow. It, it, it took a bit to get started. It, it, it had to build up to things. But once it did hit its stride again, it really hit its stride. It really went off. And it did so in just the best way it could. And, and I appreciate that. I, I genuinely appreciate that they didn't hold back. And, yeah, we're just going to kind of have to see where it goes from here. So this will be added to the schedule, and at some point in the future, we'll continue reacting to it. Um, so, yeah, I'm excited. I, I'm, ex I'm genuinely excited to see where this series goes and to see more of Peggy being a badass feminist, uh, honestly, hero. Let's be honest. Like, Peggy Carter is a hero. That's, that's always going to be the case. She may not be super, but she's still a hero. <laughs> um, so tell me in the comments below, what did you think of this first episode of Agent Carter? And thank you so much for tuning in. For now, I'm Connie and I'm signing off. See y'all next time.